To say that this was an ugly week of reselling is quite the understatement. But this is real life. Sometimes you have amazing weeks and sometimes you have weeks like this that are just If you want to learn what happened, stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hey everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. Every week I like to make these what sold videos and in these videos I share with you what types of items sold for me throughout the week, how much I got for those items, and any other special things that you should know about the week, like all of the returns and the lost items that took place this week. It was ridiculous. You know how they say when it rains it pours, like it was a monsoon over here. Like I don't know what was going on. So I'm gonna tell you about all of that stuff. 99% of all of those things were 100% my fault. So I did a lot of learning this week in terms of what not to do or what kinds of things to do in the future to make sure that these incidents don't take place again. And although it stinks, I mean, it is what it is. And like I said, it's what comes with reselling. Let me know in the comments section down below what kind of week you had if you had any sort of returns or you know just like you couldn't find an item that it sold or just if you had any frustrating things that happened to you it might make me feel a little bit better <laughs> about my week if you had a great week let me know about that too though and let me know what you did to make your week so great so let's get into what sold and like I said I will also be sharing with you what kinds of things got returned to me and all that good stuff so the week started off amazing with a zero dollar sales day on Monday. That's cool. And that kind of has been like a trend, I feel like. Like I've had a lot of zero dollar sales days on Mondays and I really thought that I was gonna have one yesterday. I'm filming this on Tuesday, which is super late for me. I typically film these on Sunday night and whenever I get them edited is, you know, another story. But yesterday, which was Monday, I had no sales going into the evening, but then I had like a flurry of random sales come through. So I was thankful that the zero sales on Monday curse was broken, finally. But let's get into what sold on Tuesday. So the first thing that sold for me on Poshmark, not a huge sale, it was this Express Black Ruffle Tank in a size medium. I did have it in my four for $25 sale, but this person just wanted the one item and she sent me an offer for $6, which I accepted, so I made $3.05 on that item. I'm fairly certain that for whatever reason, I paid full price for this tank top at some thrift store. I don't know where. This was from way earlier in my thrifting days and it was a horrible buy. So if you see a tank top like this from Express at the thrift store, stay away. You will only make $3.05. Just kidding. By the way, like when I tell you, like I don't feel like I tell you not to pick something up or to pick something up, you know, generally speaking, because different things sell for different people. All I can say is express tanks for me do not go for a lot of money. Next, I picked up, actually my husband found this. He found this Adidas Climalite Michigan blue polo shirt in a size large not that long ago I think on my birthday when we went thrifting and I told him to go ahead and pick it up because Michigan stuff it sells and you know it was on like an adidas polo so it was you know pretty nice quality I think I did see though upon further inspection once we got at home that there were just a couple little pulls here and there so I didn't price it quite as high I think I had it listed for like around 18 someone sent me an offer for $12 which I accepted so I ended up making nine dollars and five cents off of that I still made a profit just not a huge one. And then the last thing that sold on Poshmark, I was actually really excited about, and it's because I just picked it up. There's this consignment store right down, like two stores down from where my daughter takes gymnastics on Saturdays. And I had never gone there before because it's in like this part of town that it's not super nice. It's not like a bad part of town, but I wouldn't expect nice things to be in this consignment store. I don't know, like from the outside of the store, it just doesn't look like anything special, but you know, that's why they say don't judge a book by its cover because I finally went inside you know while my daughter was at gymnastics and they had amazing stuff the problem is the prices are you know consignment prices so everything was priced really high but they were having this outdoor sale and everything outside was three dollars so I got a good number of stuff like maybe I don't know I think I only spent like $19 or something with tax and stuff so I didn't get that many things but I did find like a few three dollar things that were worth my time so um, this was one of those items it was this Lafayette 148 polka dot silk tank in a size 12. So, you know, it looked like a little bit of an older style. It had like, yeah, it was like polka dot or like hexagons or something all over, and it had a cowl neck. Um, it wasn't something that like, 
you know, like young kids are wearing. It's definitely a more of a career piece. It's something that you put under a blazer, but it was made of 100% silk. Lafayette 148 is a great brand, and I have sold it before, even on Poshmark. So I listed it for, I wanna say like $48, and then pretty soon after listing it, like maybe that day or the day after, it was closet clear out, and somebody had liked the item. So I sent them a message saying, you know, my whole spiel, like if you don't know my spiel by now about closet clear out, I will leave a link right here so that you can learn a little bit more about how I like to do closet clear out. But I sent her a message saying, hey, I saw that you like the item. I can drop the price to $42 and Poshmark will pay for, you know, part of the shipping so you don't have to pay all of shipping. Are you interested in that? And she responded with yes. So I dropped the price for $42 and I made $33.60 off of that tank. And I had it listed literally for, I don't even think 24 hours and I only paid $3 for it. So that was really exciting. And it was really fun to find a new place to do some thrifting. And the cool thing is, like I said, it is down the street from my daughter's gymnastics place. So I'll be able to go there like once a week. I just don't think they're gonna have sales all that often, but you know, I can still go and browse around. It's also nice to go in places like that because you know you have the opportunity to look at really high-end clothes that maybe typically you wouldn't be able to so you know the first time that I went in they had a few racks of just like high-end designer pieces so I was able to see brands and touch brands and feel fabrics that I don't come across on a daily basis so that's really neat you know it's good research research if you want to call it that so I'm glad to have added that place now to my you know repertoire of places that I can go thrift. So that's really fun. And then on that day, I also had a few sales over on eBay. One was an auction sale. You know how I love my crappy eBay <laughs> auctions. And it was just this J. Crew Factory textured cotton polo shirt in a size small. I had it, you know, with an auction starting at $4.99. I had one bid on it. The buyer paid for shipping, so I made $4.72 off of that sale. Not too shabby. I mean, I've had much worse auctions. And then the last thing that sold on eBay that day was this Abercrombie & Fitch Gray Sentinel Utility Jacket. This jacket, I got it at the bins in Indianapolis. I think I got it when I went with a bunch of reseller friends and it was pretty heavy. It's like pretty heavy duty. It's got a bunch of pockets on the front. It's a great jacket. Someone sent me an offer for $50 on this on eBay, which I happily accepted. I think I had it listed pretty high. Like I had it listed at 78 or something like that. But again, given the fact that I got it at the bins and probably paid maybe like five or six dollars for it, because like I said, it was kind of heavy, I was totally okay with that. I had them pay for eight dollars of shipping, so I had to still pay two dollars and three cents on top of that, because you know, like I said, it was pretty heavy. So I still made a total of forty dollars and forty-three cents. The problem is that this got returned to me. And the reason I got returned, this was the only one that like wasn't really my fault. It got returned because the buyer said that they really liked the jacket. It was, you know, in great shape. The sleeves were just too long. And I mean, they were like the sleeves were really long. And that's one measurement that I don't really include on my clothes or like sleeve measurements. Um, I just haven't found the need to. But I do feel like I remember looking at this jacket and being like, these sleeves are really long. And I feel like if I say that about an item, maybe I should go and just add an extra measurement in there because clearly there's something like a little bit off about it. Not that it's like wrong or you know, it's manufactured poorly or anything like that. So from here on out, if I notice something like that, like whether a sleeve just seems a little bit off, whether it's long or short, or maybe the length of something just seems a little wonky, I'm gonna go ahead and just include an extra, you know, picture of that measurement or something like that just to cover my own butt. But at the end of the day too, like, I don't want someone to be stuck with something that they don't love. And especially, you know, like he paid $50 for it. And like I said, he was really nice in his comment in regards to the return. Um, he was cordial and everything. So I, I get it. Like, I don't want to be stuck with something either if it doesn't fit. And I paid $50 for it. So I told him, you know, it was fine. He could go ahead and return the jacket. He actually left me positive feedback, which I thought was really kind of him too. So I'm waiting for that to come back. This was just really annoying because I like maybe the next day I had posted something about how I had sold three jackets and it was one per platform and I was feeling myself and I was like I'm awesome I mean that's not how I phrased it but that's how I was feeling and of those three jackets that sold from that Instagram post two of them got returned to me so I'm gonna talk about the second one here soon it's just really annoying and then also this was a sale from last week but I also got a return case opened on me on eBay 
for an auction item, a J. Crew t-shirt that cost $1.99, and it's because the shirt had some holes on the front that I had not noticed when I had shipped it out. I didn't take the pictures of it, and so I think that's why I just kind of assumed it was fine, so when it sold, I pulled it and I just sent it out, and they sent you know pictures showing the holes and whatnot, so it's a dollar ninety nine cents it's fine like I'll eat the cost it's fine so in total I had four returns this week is that right I think four returns and that's not even like the end of the ridiculousness of this week it's it's just been a week people so that was return number one was the Abercrombie jacket let's call the Jayku t-shirt that you know it's not from this week it's sold last week but the return thing situation happened this week that's number two we're gonna get into number three here soon. But on Tuesday, the last thing that sold was over on Mercari. So this was one day when I had a sale on all three platforms, which is really cool. And the last sale on Mercari was this new with tags Alfani, which is like a Macy's brand. This blue shirt with a cowl neck. It was in a size small. I would say it was more of a tunic, like it was a little bit longer. It sold for $16, and this was something that I had listed a while ago. And I listed it with free shipping, but I listed it with free shipping using Mercari's shipping, which is dumb. Don't use Mercari's shipping. They charge so much, it's so expensive, and it's almost always cheaper if you go through like pirate ship or a third party shipping company. That's the word I'm looking for, company, like them. Um, I paid $5.25 to have FedEx ship it, plus I had to go find a FedEx and drop it off there. It was super annoying. I made $9.15 off of this item. A friend did give it to me for free, so you know, it's all in the green, but still, like, it was. I should not have paid $5.25 to ship that out, but that's fine. Moving on to Wednesday. I sold this Fry Leather Brown Jacket, and it, like, are leather and suede the same thing? Do you know the answer to this? If so, please leave it in the comment section down below. It was made of what looks like suede, right? Like what people call suede. But on the tag, on the care tag, it said that it was made of 100% leather. So I put 100% leather on there, but I mean, I would, really call it more of a suede jacket. I had it listed for over $100, I think maybe like at $124. Someone sent me an offer for $80 and I accepted it because I've had this jacket since last year. I thrifted it at a Goodwill and I paid up for it. <laughs> like, I, I don't like to pay a whole lot for items and I need to be better about that. Like, I need to be better about knowing that some things are worth the investment. But I paid $10, so I was like, $80, it's still a good return. I made $64 on the item. The problem is I got a return case opened on this jacket and it's because I had it listed as a men's jacket. To my uncultured eye, I really thought it looked more like a men's jacket than a woman's jacket. But the guy got it and it was actually really funny because he, again, was like so kind and so sweet in the comments. He was like, this is a beautiful jacket. It was shipped out in a very timely manner and you know, all this stuff. Unfortunately, it is not a men's jacket and he's like, here is the proof. And he like took pictures of himself in the jacket and he's literally like busting out of it. And the sleeves are so short. And he was like, the, the buttons are also on the wrong side. Like clearly it's a woman's jacket. So he's gonna send it back to me. I'm gonna be able to relist it. And some woman is going to be so lucky to, you know, get this jacket and enjoy the crap out of it because clearly he could not. Again, you know, I could have fought it in the sense of like, I had the measurements listed in my listing, but I don't want him to be stuck with a jacket that he can't wear. You know, like I don't want it to turn nasty in that comment section of like a return case. I made a mistake. I should have done more research. I should have realized it was a men's jacket. Who makes it? Um, mysterious. And it is mysterious because the buttons are on the wrong side. That's the mystery. Now I know, now I understand that like buttons are on a certain side, if it's a men's jacket or a woman's jacket, all that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna chalk this up as a learning experience, move on, you know, get the jacket back, relist it, it's gonna be fine. But ooh, that was a big hit, because I think that was my biggest sale of the week. The next thing that sold over on Poshmark did not get returned to me. It was also not a very exciting sale. It was just a pair of loft career pants. They were the Marissa Fit in a black straight leg cut and they were a size four. Someone sent me an offer for $18, which 
you know, I'm like happy with when it comes to those career pant type of things. $18, and so I took home $14.40 on that sale. I did have some sales on eBay this day as well. One was this loft purple lightweight wool blend cardigan in a size small. It did have some minor pilling on it, which obviously I took pictures of and disclosed. And it sold for $12. The buyer paid shipping. And I did have to pay like an additional 18 cents to ship it out because I had the buyer pay for $3 of shipping. It was $3 and 18 cents to ship it out. So I still made $10 and 26 cents on this item. This was given to me for free. So that was $10 and 26 cents of pure profit. And that was awesome. $12 was like lower than what I wanted to get for it, but also like pretty realistic. Like loft, just let's be honest, it doesn't go for that much. And it was a plain basic cardigan. The next thing that sold on eBay was an auction item, and it was this Anthropology Tila, am I saying that right? I don't know if it's like T.la, but Tila black v-neck t-shirt, very basic. <laughs> Just, you know, 100% cotton in a size medium. I started the auction at $4.99. There were two bids on this, people. <laughs> like, it's been a long time since I've had an auction item go for more than just the one bid. So that felt really good. It sold for $5.50. They paid for shipping, and so I made $4.79 off of that item. I think I picked it up at a Goodwill because I'm an idiot. I just, I still get really excited when I come across anthropology because it's very rare that I do. So it's hard for me to leave it behind. But I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better. The last thing that sold over on eBay was this Talbot's nautical skirt. It had like these knots, like ropes in knots. That's why I called it nautical. <laughs> but yeah, it was like a Boy Scout had gone on there and just started making all these knots. Anyways, in a size six petite, it was kind of a pencil skirt, but it was an odd length for a pencil skirt. Like it was just like a little too short to really be considered, you know, a pencil skirt that was appropriate for work. And I think that's why I've had this for so long. Like I've had this in my Poshmark closet forever. I finally got it cross-listed over to eBay and I just, I've had it for a long time. So it wasn't on eBay for very long. I, you know, put it out on auction with a starting bid of $2.99. Someone bid $2.99. So I made $2.60 after all was said and done because they did pay for for shipping and then finally this was my third jacket of that day that had sold and I guess that Abercrombie one that I talked about earlier from eBay that had sold like really late in the night and I didn't see that it had sold until the next morning which is why I thought that they had all you know that all three of them had sold in the same day regardless the last jacket that sold this day and the only one that I have not gotten returned to me yet <laughs> who knows though like there's still time is this black down jacket with really pretty ruffles like all throughout and it had a faux fur lining on the inside of the hood and maybe on the inside of the jacket too I can't remember I got this for free from you know one of my friends at church who like literally gave me seven or eight huge bags of clothing I'm not even talking like you know just like bags I'm talking like big bags that you like take to the laundromat full of clothes like they were so generous and they were just trying to you know get rid of clothes but this was in there and there was no brand and there was also no like care tag or anything like that so i didn't really know a lot about the jacket except for the fact that it was down filled and that's because there was some sort of like you know tag that said that it was down but I had it listed maybe in like the 40s or maybe like high 30s. Someone offered me $31 for it. And I had this listed as them paying shipping and it was like $11 for them to get at FedEx, which, whew. So they paid for shipping. And so I made $27.90 off of that jacket for which I am very, very thankful. Here's to hoping that I do not get a return case on this jacket as well. I've actually never had a return case opened on me on Mercari, like do they even do that? I'm sure they do, but if you have any experience with like returns on Mercari, let me know how that goes down in the comment section down below. Moving on to Thursday the 26th, I had a pretty decent sale over on Poshmark. I had two sales, but the first one was this pair of Nicole Miller Black Mella ankle rain boots in a size eight. Mella was like the name of the boot. Um, Nicole Miller is not a brand that I have a lot of experience with, but I did get these in my Thread Up Rescue haul box, which I will link right here. And, you know, they got a lot of interest. A lot of people like them and whatnot. They're really cute. I just, you know, didn't have anyone take the plunge. But someone sent me an offer for them for $44, which I accepted, so I made $35.20. The next thing that sold on Poshmark was this pair of Chico's medallion print wide leg palazzo pants in a Chico size 2. 
which I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. They use that vanity sizing. So like a two is maybe it's like a large or an extra large or something like that. Someone sent me an offer for $23, which was a little bit lower than I wanted to go. I think I had it listed for like $32 or something like that. But I went ahead and accepted because as you know, cute as I thought that these were, they weren't getting a whole lot of interest, so I accepted the $23 offer and made $18.40. I really typically do not pick up Chico's. I just thought these were really cute because they were wide leg, they were like really flattering, and yeah. So I'm glad that they're going to a new home. And then the last thing that sold on the 26th actually sold on eBay, and it was this Michael by Michael Kors cap sleeve drawstring sleeve, like cap sleeve shirt in a really pretty pink color, and it was a size extra large made of 100% cotton. This shirt was given to me for free by someone at church, and I did pay for shipping. I listed it for $17.99, and it sold at my full asking price. So after, you know, paying for $3.28 of shipping, I made $15.22 two cents off of that and it was pure profit. I just got word that the buyer would like to return this top to me and it's because it did not match her hair. By the way, if you want to see a haul video of the kinds of items that I get for free from friends, I will link it right here. I'm working on making like my part two and part three of that. I just need to find time to sit there and actually haul those items. But if you wanted to get some tips on even how to like get free items yourself from people in your life, I would check out that video. And then on Friday the 27th, I only had one sale and it was this new without the box Gabor Am I saying that right? I don't know. Red leather side zip ankle boots in what I thought was a size seven and a half. This was my, are we on our final return here? I think this is my fourth return. Oh, so what happened here was, well, first of all, let me get to the sale. I had these listed for $68, I wanna say. I sent out offers to Likers on this pair of boots for $60 with free shipping. Very rarely do I do free shipping, but when it's you know a higher ticket item, it doesn't eat into your cost as much, like it doesn't hurt as much, you know what I mean? So I tried it on these and someone bit, so I made a profit of $41.21. The problem is that these boots, the size that was listed on the inside of the boot was the European size or like the UK size or whatever. So I thought that they were a seven and a half. They were actually a seven and a half in the UK. So they actually are like a US nine and a half, something like that. Again, the person who opened the case on Poshmark was so kind so sweet you know like all these people could have been really nasty about it and i've had some nasty people who open up return cases but everyone that i dealt with this week probably with the exception of like the j crew t-shirt guy but everyone was really sweet they were all very much just like the item is great it just doesn't fit me or it's not my size or you listed it incorrectly whatever so this again was my fault like i should have done more research i should have made sure that i listed it as the correct size so obviously i you know okayed the return that was my fourth one, right? Was that the fourth one? It was like that, it was, yeah, it was the two jackets, it was the t-shirt, so it was not a great week, guys. So, you know, I'm gonna tell you the totals at the end of what I would have made had it not been for these returns and other situations, and then I tell you what I actually ended up making, because you don't care what I could have made, you really care what I, you know, ended up putting in my bank account. So the Saturday 28th, I sold a few things. Saturday was really cool because my theater group at my school, we had this huge garage sale and we had donations come in from all over the community, which was really cool. And we started accepting those items on Friday night between like four and 8 p.m. And what I did on Friday night was I like pulled all of the stuff that I thought was worth more than what people were gonna pay us for, you know, those items at the garage sale. I pulled those items, I set up a little like station for myself to take pictures and list. So this is my little area of the garage sale. I'm pulling stuff that I think is worth a decent amount of money. This is stuff that needs to be steamed or maybe has already been steamed. These are my Ikea bags. I just keep going back over to where the clothes are and pulling things that I think are worth, you know, trying to resell on eBay and Poshmark. I've got a little steamer set up here, my laptop, my ring light, a student behind me, some toys. <laughs> Some shoes, some hats, some Harry Potter wands, the huge. So that's what's going on right now. And so I probably pulled like anywhere from, I don't know, like 20 to 40 items. And I started taking pictures of them and listing them. So if you go through my Poshmark closet or eBay store and you see any items with like a brick wall background, those are all items that I took 
from the garage sale. And what we're going to do is I'm going to split the profit of everything that I sell at the garage sale 50 50. So 50% will go to me since I have to go through the trouble of like photographing them, listing them, shipping them out. And then I will give 50% to the theater group. So we both kind of win. So I do have a few sales that sold, you know, really quickly, even from, you know, me listing it on Friday and Saturday. You can find me at Becky Park at both of those platforms. If you really wanted to like go the extra mile and support my theater group at school, we have, you know, great kids who are putting on some great productions. Then you could look for the pictures with the brick wall. But the first thing that sold was this pair of Vans Pro Skateboarding black suede shoes in a size 10 and a half. They belong to the brother of one of my students. And someone sent me an offer for $20, which I accepted. So I made $16 off of those shoes. I'll get $8, I'll send $8 over to my theater company. And it was really weird because I had them listed for $28. Someone sent me an offer for $25 and then they canceled their offer, which was kind of annoying. But then like not very much later, I got an offer for $20 and I just went ahead and accepted because, you know, the suede was worn a little bit. So I wanted to go ahead and just move them when I had a pretty reasonable offer. And then the second thing that sold on Saturday was this Banana Republic Factory green moto zip sweater jacket in a size small. I got an offer for $12, which was a little lower than I wanted, but I accepted and I made $9.05. I could not find this sweater anywhere. I went through every single bin in my house, touched every piece of clothing in every single bin. I went through my closet where I hang stuff. I went through like I have the shelving unit in one of my closets where I put some like bigger sweaters and stuff at the top. This sweater is not in my house. I don't know where it is. Maybe I accidentally sold it on another platform. I I don't think I did though because it's been, it's like in a part of my closet where like I haven't cross-listed a lot of like the items from that section of my Poshmark closet yet. Where is it? I, do you have it? Is it in your house? Like, so after looking for it for two days, I went ahead and I canceled the order and I let her know. I said, I looked everywhere for this item. It is not in my house. I'm so sorry. So you know, I ended up not making that sale. That is the last blunder of the week. But oh my God, it's been a week, people. It's been a week. Hopefully your week was much better than mine. And then on Sunday the 29th, I did have a few sales. The first thing was from the garage sale. It was actually donated by a friend of mine who came by and dropped some stuff off for the garage sale on that Friday, which was really sweet. And it was, I called it a carpet bag. It was from Eddie Bauer. And it was this large kind of like plaid-ish carpet bag. I don't know how else to describe it. The top of it had kind of like a wiry material. So it like, it retained its structure at the top, if that makes sense. And it never like collapsed into itself. I don't know. And it was really big. So I listed that and Sunday was a closet clear out day. So again, I did my like closet clear out technique. I swear they have like three a week now, but someone liked the item. I sent them my spiel about like, you like this item. It's closet clear out. Do you blah, 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 whatever. And they're like, sure. So I dropped the price to $20. They got discounted shipping that I didn't have to pay for. So I made $16 again, $8 goes to me. $8 goes to theater. This next item also sold through Closet Clear Out. Actually, everything that I sold on Poshmark that Sunday sold through Closet Clear Out. So the next item that sold was actually this pair of Cole Haan Nike Air brown leather slip-on shoes in a size seven and a half. I also picked this up the same time that I picked up that Lafayette 148 tank at that same place. Again, it's like for a more mature woman, but mature women also shop on Poshmark. And so this sold for $38. That's what I dropped the price to. I think I had it listed at like 45 or something like that but the person said that they would buy it at $38. So I dropped the price to $38. I made $30 and 40 cents after, you know, Poshmark paid for a dollar and 80 cents of shipping. And then the last thing that sold from the garage sale and as a result of closet clear out was the St. Louis Cardinal snapback mesh hat. It was in great condition. It did have like, it said like Shane Co embroidered on the side. I don't know what that means, but someone liked it. A few people liked it actually. And you know, I asked them, I had it listed for $18. I said, if I drop the price to 16, would you want it? You know, Poshmark will cover some of your shipping. And he said, well, what about 15? And I was like, 15 it is, that's fine. So I made $12, six of which will go to me and six of which will go to the theater program at my school. I had zero sales on eBay and zero sales on Mercari that day. So let's talk numbers, people. 
it was not pretty. On Poshmark, had I not had any returns or not canceled any sales, I would have made $302.36 after selling 13 items. But after all was said and done, I only made $188.10. Oh my gosh, that is awful. And it's because it was like big ticket items. It was like an $80 jacket. It was $60 boots. It was, you know what I mean? Like it hurt real bad this week. On eBay, without that return on the Abercrombie jacket, I sold six items for a total of $78.02. But when you take the profit out from that jacket, I only made $37.59. And then finally on Mercari, no returns, thank the good Lord. I made a total of $37.05. Had I not had any returns or you know had to cancel any sales, I would have had a total of $417.43 for the week, which would have been a really good week for me. That's you know really good. Instead, I only made $262.74. You live and you learn. So, you know, for me, from this week, my goal is to just like take away as many lessons as possible. Just making sure that I'm putting the correct size, the correct gender making sure that if there are wonky things about a garment of clothing, whether, you know, like the length of something is weird or I don't know, like if I look at something and I'm like, mm, this is, this is interesting to take note of it and to, you know, take extra measurements if I need to do that. I also, you know, learn the importance of making sure that I'm organized so that I'm not losing pieces of clothing. That really doesn't happen to me very often, but it does happen and it shows that I need to do a better job of inventorying things and just making sure that I'm not selling things that I actually don't have in my house. I also maybe just have like random clothes hiding somewhere in my house, I don't know. I was thankful though because it was a great week for closet clear out. I think I had like four sales due to my little closet clear out tactic. Um, so that was really good. I'm hoping that this next week is better. Today, like I said, it is Tuesday, and I did have sales on Monday and today as well. So, you know, I'm hoping that things pick up from here and I don't have as many returns. And I'm hoping that once I get those returned items listed that they will sell for a similar price. Who knows, maybe they'll sell for even more. They are great items. I just have to, you know, list them correctly and they will go to the right home. So I hope you guys had a better week than I did. I'm sure it wasn't difficult to have a better week than I did, but thanks as always for watching and being a part of my journey. I love you guys. You're awesome. That's it. Bye.